All right, you miscast miscreants. We went out and we saw it. We went to church. We saw the nun. Today, I miscast entertainment. Welcome back, you miscast miscreants, to another episode of Miscast Entertainment Movie Reviews with your hosts, the wonderful JJ, howdy, the magnificent Greg, hello, and yours truly, William Davis Moore. Together, we have a combined experience of 30 plus years as film writers, film critics, film app producers, film book publishers, over yonder, and side cinematographers. If you're new to the channel, head on over to our YouTube channel and check out some of our old content so you can get all caught up. And then hit that subscribe button if you dig it and hit the bell next to it so you can get notified of all of our future content. So, we went to church. Yes. And we saw the nun. We did. We got some religion. When an ancient evil is unwillingly released into the world by incompetent nuns, the Vatican calls in special holy agent of the Lord, Father Burke. Add a young, almost nun who has a problem with authority and believes in evolution, Sister Irene. And you have the perfect demon-slaying duo and the obvious choice to save the world. Joined by a French-Canadian named Frenchie. Yes, I shit you not, that is his name. It is up to this tenacious trio to fight back against the agents of hell and consecrate the unholy grounds. Starring Taisa Farmiga, Damien Bichir, Jonas Bloquet, and Gabriella Irina Dinka as one of these demonic nuns. I think this one. No, that one. Oh, shit, I don't know. One of them. The nun. We got some religion. Mm. I saw a lot of upside down crosses. Yep. Uh, burning crosses. That's, burning. that's your type of religion right there. <laughs> Jesus, uh, Jesus got it bad in this one. Yeah, he did. Well, he, sa- he ended up saving the day. He did. He saved us. He saved us all. He saved us all. Spoilers, right, your mother's. Right. Spoilers. Spoilers. Oh, spoilers. <laughs> spoilers. Jesus saved us all at the end. Spoilers about Christianity. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Jesus dies at the end. Spoiler. <laughs> oh. Damn it. Too soon. Damn it. Uh, all right. We're so very controversial here. <laughs> this uh, this movie, uh, let's just start right off and get into the reviews because uh, I got I to talk about this. It got a lot of buzz. I yeah. mean, that's all I freaking heard all, uh, all, all week was the nun, the nun, the nun, the nun. Um, we should have went and saw some other movie, but it had no buzz. So we're getting this for you. And what do you got, JJ? Um, I think, I think honestly, I think a lot of people who are f- fans of The Conjuring and Annabelle, I think a lot of them will enjoy this movie. There is no doubt that the movie is scary. There's a lot of scares in the movie. From beginning to end, the movie does not stop trying to scare you. But for someone like me, who is a horror movie lover, it was just the cheap kind of scares. When I see a horror movie, the horror movies that I love terrorize me. There was no terror, there was no dread. There was just a lot of jump scares. Mm -hmm. Short and sweet. Short and sweet. Short and sweet. Short and sweet. sweet. Next. So so I agree with JJ that uh, there was trying to scare you from beginning to end. And I think it was more effective on me because I'm not as huge of a horror movie fan as you are, as you say that you are. Um, so I like The Conjuring too, and I enjoyed those kind of scares, and The Nun, just the whole thing with The Nuns, it creeped me out the whole time. And William could attest to us, he was sitting, we were sitting next to each other in the theater, and I was just going, every time something, you knew, you knew something was gonna come, yeah. you know? But even still, I was sitting there, I was like, oh shit, oh fuck, here it comes, here it comes, something's coming, something's gonna happen. It was hilarious. Yeah, so uh, he, he enjoyed that, my performance more than the movie, I, I think. I did. Um, but uh, yeah, that was, uh, I, I thought it was scary for me from beginning to end. Uh, the jump scares, I didn't find them quite as cheap. I mean, maybe you've seen more of that sort of thing than I have, but it did its job. I, my main note was that it was effective. Um, so overall, I thought it was extremely creepy. You know, okay. that was that was basically it. It was effective and scarce. So, yeah. So I enjoyed it for that. It kind of fell apart towards the end. Like the first half, I thought it started off real strong, and then there was a weird little time jump after um, spoiler alert: the father gets buried alive, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden it jumps to the next morning. But it was very odd. 
because uh, all of a sudden she has her habit on. And from then on out, the movie just kind of took a dive as far as the storytelling went and the script went. Yeah, that habit was strange. I know the, the, the cut you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, so it was just a weird, a weird little, weird little time jump. It was just a few hours in the story, but it felt very odd. Um, so, yeah, it, it kind of fell apart towards the end as far as the dialogue kind of got ridiculous, and uh, they were it tried to get a little jokey towards the end, and um, yeah, I thought it just fell apart. But like you said, just kept trying to scare you from beginning to end. So all right. So what was your rating? You didn't give a rating. No, I, I want to talk about it a little bit more. Oh, Can yeah? we do the ratings at the end, if you don't mind? Yeah, whatever you want to do, Because, I mean, whatever. <laughs> sometimes, you know, the things we, we say kind yeah. of like... Change your opinion? Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, what's your initial rating then? Like, from if you didn't talk to us, what would you say just walking out of the theater? Walking out of the theater for the average normie going to see a horror movie, right. I would give it a three out of five stars. Wow. Okay. Because... Straight I agree out with the that. gate. Because it's it's really I think it it does appease the average moviegoer who is just looking you know they're, they're sitting next to somebody I think I think in a in a if you imagine um, a busy movie theater every time one of these jump scares comes out I think a bunch of people are going to be screaming mm -hmm. and a bunch of people are going to be laughing afterwards so I think a lot of people are going to have fun with those jump scares mm -hmm. personally I find them kind of cheap because anything can scare you I mean I could literally hide behind the door as soon as somebody walks past i scream at them and they're, they're gonna get scared anybody can do that but very few people can really terrorize you and that that's why i value that so much more than just your average right. jump scare yeah when the story like brings your mind into that state and then you don't have right. to have a jump scare yeah I, I was thinking about the yeah. sixth sense you know and and uh it, that was such a, a frightening film yes and and the thing about that movie is that even though we don't believe in ghosts we believe that that kid believed in ghosts mm -hmm. and once that kid is grounded in reality and and you know he, and he was a great actor so once we once we believe what he believes then then you you know you're ready to get you know anything can happen at that point but in this movie i never really got the sense that the characters really believed the stuff that they were seeing right it was almost like an action adventure movie in in many respects. They were just sort of kind of just going into these different situations. Right. And I like the like I said in the beginning, and to kind of go where you were going. Um, like I said, I, th I thought it started off strong. It's almost almost a detective story in the vein of like The Exorcist, kind sure. of trying to figure out what was going on there. And um, yeah, then it, it and it was effective with the when the um, the nun and all the other nuns were ghosts rather than uh, they became almost zombies at the end you know right and uh to me that just kind of ruined it it was like oh now they're corporeal um i could put my hands on them. we can knock the head off of one of them with a with a shovel or some crap i think it was an axe yeah yeah whatever axe. it was um <laughs> that that i was like oh all right that just took a turn into the really ridiculous but i thought there was a good mix of jump scares you know and then just like creep the atmospheric stuff, like when you can only see the nun really in the shadows a little bit. Right. So I thought that was really effective, and the music I thought did a good job. The sound I thought was amazing. Yeah. I went to one of those Dolby theaters, and you could hear like the creaking of the cathedral mm -hmm. and the wood, like in all these different places. So I really recommend if you're gonna go see this movie, go see it in a theater with really good sound mm -hmm. because my the best thing they did in this movie was the sound yeah, yeah the, the sound was was much better than the film and the cinematography was great too mm -hmm. the production yeah. value overall was really good mm -hmm. my my problem was the story was not good um if you could take a horror movie and turn it into a cliche this is it i mean as soon as i saw the uh crucifix go upside down i was just like yeah. oh man come on like it killed it I, I immediately killed it for me because I thought it was going to be something unique because the whole time I'm seeing Marilyn Manson in, in a nun's outfit. I'm like, <laughs> well, all right, that's already made it super cheesy for me because I can't get that out of my head. Marilyn Manson stars in this movie. And Bonnie I mean, they Aarons, couldn't, they couldn't change the makeup a little bit to make him not look like freaking a 90s rock star. <laughs> like, I don't know, whatever. But uh, I, the whole religion as a horror falls flat for me anymore. Really? I can't. I, I, I've not seen it done well since The Exorcist. Um, I had fun with it when I was a kid because I actually believed that stuff when I was a kid. So I think uh, I think that a religious horror film has more effect on someone who thinks it's real. 
So if you believe in all of that Catholicism and crosses and crucifixes mm-hmm. and priests and nuns and stuff, then I think that that will scare the shit out of you because you think, all right, that's the real deal. It could happen to me, you know. But once you, you're outside that bubble, it's just a really bad camp. It's not even campy. They tried it a little bit with that, sh- with that axe stuff with Frenchy, mm-hmm. uh, which we can get into as a whole other conversation. Yes. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, the, uh, the campiness fell flat because when they, they were, in the beginning it had promise, I thought. You know, it really looked like it was going to start to be a really interesting movie. Then they started with the demon crap, and then I summoned some guy out of a crack in the ground. And I like that part, uh, of the <laughs> but there are so many other movies in the pile of library, uh, the library of movies that do it way better. The yes. Gate yes. alone yeah. yes. does it better. If you want to do a movie about a gate to hell, that's your movie, not the nun that's trying to th- just brush over. Let's crack the earth a little bit. Not even the earth, just some concrete. <laughs> no heavy metal things. in this movie. <laughs> the, the music, though, I thought was amazing. Like that, that scene where the, that we first saw um, the demon, you know, turning into the nun as, as it came out of the shadows and it was turning off, like, not just light, but ambient light, yeah. right. which was cool. Like, it was turning light to shadow, I thought was pretty interesting. Forgive me, Father. You're the sin I'm about to commit. <laughs> That scene was awesome. If the movie would have stayed on track with that, I would have had much more uh, investment in what was going on. But as it was, uh, it, it went into um, Jesus has got to save you with the blood of Christ mm-hmm. and all the tropes and cliches yeah. and the, every other shot was a 180 rotation around a close up of someone's face to try and scare you about what's behind them. I literally would, I, if you would have counted those shots, it probably was like 20 or 30 of those shots. <laughs> Every time I knew oh, it was yeah, coming because yeah. Greg would go, oh, no, <laughs> oh, no. He literally out loud would say yeah. <laughs> scary. Yeah. See that and that, so. I, and that, you know, to go off what you said, the, the religion thing, it worked on me because this movie did for me with nuns what Jaws did for people, you know, that were afraid of sharks back when that came out. So now nuns like that, they're in their full half and stuff <laughs> like that creep me the hell out really yeah. really so that whole the whole religion thing i'm not the most religious person but when i was a kid i went you know my parents made me go to sunday school and then i after, went to catholic school after wednesday blah, blah, blah. i was an altar boy i so, did all that crap well, so there you go so you kind of grew up with it too um but for me it was yeah that, that kind of stuff it did creep me out <laughs> see I'm, I'm not a religious person i kept thinking man you know uh do you guys feel that these supernatural thrillers are becoming less and less frightening as uh, for us as a society because we are becoming less and less religious. Yeah. So, well, that was my answer. I don't. I. I you think know. that they are if they're done well. This yeah. one was done pretty well. Conjuring two, I thought was done really well with that, um, and that's why I was like kind of excited to see this one because I thought mm-hmm. the nun was the cr- the best part of part two. Um, so yeah, if it's done well. Okay. I think uh, I think it depends because we're like veteran warriors of horror and thrillers and shit like Movies that. In general. I mean, stuff, stuff that usually scares the shit out of people makes us laugh. So <laughs> I don't know if we're really the, the right people to make the decision on if that's good for the, the, the audience because it takes, we have a high bar, Yeah, you know, other, other than just having fun with it and, and thinking it's a cheesy movie that's fun to watch. Is it an interesting movie? Is it a good horror? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know that religion plays a part so much. Well, one of the things I noticed about this movie is that it was, like you said, extremely unoriginal. I don't yeah. know if you guys know this or not, but in 2004, Lionsgate came out with the movie called The Nun. Really? No, I did not know yeah. that. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, w- watch the trailer. 2004, The Nun by Lionsgate. And it's about this um, ghost nun that comes out of the water and kills people. Yeah. Interesting. Maybe that's where Wait, they got the original. That? <laughs> <laughs> and that's, and yeah, that's what me, happens. Though. There's a scene where the nun is floating on top of the, like walking on water like Jesus. And I was like, man, is this an homage to that old movie? Was she walking on? I don't remember that. I yeah, remember she, her coming she, out of the water. She, she, at one point, there's this wide shot where she's just like floating oh, okay. on top of the I'm water. Not, the understand. photograph I made where I'm surrounding the souls mm-hmm. and I'm standing on the water in that cloak. That's 10,000 times better in that shot of that stupid nun. Oh, yeah. Nun. Su- super cheesy. Yeah. <laughs> and even even if you look at the, the promo uh, posters for the nun, they ripped off uh, the Nine Inch Nails logo. You know, they do like uh, the second N is backwards, just like Nine Inch Nails. Oh, okay. 
Oh, yes, they I, did. I yes, they did. Yeah. So I kept thinking like nine inch nails or whatever. Yeah. But <laughs> it, nine inch nails. There was nothing. There was nothing original. There, there was no new original idea no. in this movie at all. There was well, nothing new. No. I like that they went back to the 50s and it was kind of like a period piece, you know. Um, what was weird, though, to me about the setting uh, was that it's set in Romania and you have a uh, clearly Hispanic lead yes. uh, and his name was Anthony Burke. Right. But, uh, a very American yeah. name. And he had an American newspaper and everybody in this remote Romanian town spoke English. But he's not from Romania. He was called from like to Rome right. to go to Romania. Right. What bothered me was the people that were in Romania sp- spoke English. Yes. No, yeah. No, <laughs> him, him speaking English didn't bother me. But Damien mm-hmm. Bashir is clearly not American, yet he had an American name. Right. So you could have made them made his character from Spain, called him Antonio rather than Anthony. Something like that, you know. How about how about the fact that you, you said, you know, you alluded to it, it's a period piece, 1950-something. Yeah. You couldn't tell, though, because it's just a bunch of nuns and priests in a convent. Yeah. So well, as far as I know, that it's, <laughs> it's right down the road, and that shit's still going on. If right. you're in Romania, I'm sure the shit looks exactly the same. Right. What I had an issue with is, all right, it's a period a piece. It's 1950s, right? But why are they using lamps? Everybody's got one person uses a flashlight. It's not 1850. They got a lamp just to. Oh, everybody's got the lanterns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what was with the fog? Everywhere you went in that movie <laughs> was fog. fog. It was foggy. It was foggy inside. It was foggy outside. It was. <laughs> it's not a horror movie. It's a fog. foggy town. She had fog in her bedroom. <laughs> it's <clears throat> fog everywhere, man. And, and one last little nitpick while I'm on a rant. Uh, the nuns down there in that cellar for oh, an entire freaking week, and they go down there and they're just chilling. He's cracking fingers. No one's like, my God, the smell, man. Well, it was frozen. She was frozen. <laughs> An ice shed with no ice in the bottom. Yeah, I don't know how that worked, but it, I mean, clearly she was meant to be frozen, you know? I did not get that. No one had breath. There was no, uh, yeah, I think there was there no was, indication. There were some poor, weird <laughs> you know? decisions. William, everything stinks during that period of time. Everything <laughs> stinks. You stink. Like, everything stinks. You can't you go can't somewhere. <laughs> the, the pub that they went to, like, stinks. The only, <laughs> everything stinks. The only inkling that stuff stank was when they were um, going around Frenchie's farm and the priest had uh, the napkin over oh, his nose. Oh, gotcha. And all the and pig, that, pig shit. Yeah, and that was the only thing that, but not you know. the, the two week old dead nun no, <laughs> no. i'll tell no. you what, what what annoyed me the most about this movie was the fact that um okay so demons can do whatever they want they can change into whatever shape they want and the thing is that the demons could kill you at any time at any time he can come and kill you but he, he doesn't want to kill he just wants to fuck with you he's, right, like, he's like a cat mm-hmm. you know like a cat that wants to kill you and these fuckers would fall for the the trick every single time. Yeah. Oh, little boy going to cemetery go at there. night. Let's follow go follow him. him. <laughs> oh, this other person doing this thing. Oh, let's go follow him. That's the same trope that that they always accuse of, of white people of doing. <laughs> uh, when, when there's something creepy, they they go in there when nobody else should should do yeah. that. The whole scream thing. The there's, rules. Yes, yeah, the, yeah. the whole scream thing. Yeah, like um, just a simple thing to put in that story to help. That would have been like, there's a reason why he can't kill you. Like he needs your fear or something that right. helps him to open the gate. But not even that. Just uh, I can kill you right now and end this because I really want to get in the world and destroy the universe. Uh, but no, I'm gonna let a couple of old nuns keep me at bay, yeah. and I'm just gonna let me ring the bells. I'll just yeah, ring the bells. I'll kill you sometimes. <laughs> yeah, let me bust out a snake I'll, yeah you know? i'll bury you alive but i'm gonna give you a bell so that you can notify the other nuns right. so he can dig you up yeah <laughs> just well. just to, uh, i'm an evil demon but i'm just gonna mess with your head <laughs> now i wanted to ask you guys uh a real quick question here so this movie because I, I i've only seen conjuring 2 i haven't seen conjuring 1 and i haven't seen annabelle um and in conjuring 1 and 2 it starred vera farmiga Yes. Who is the older sister of the star of this movie, right. Thaisa Farmiga, 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 I don't know. They look right. very similar, yeah. Exactly alike. Yeah. So with me forgetting, and I couldn't remember um, Vera's, Farmiga's name from the uh, Conjuring movies. So I kind of thought that this was an origin story for that character. I was like, oh, is this just a younger version of Vera? Because they showed uh, the older sister in the beginning of the movie and at the end of the movie. So if you haven't seen the uh, other movies, or like me, you just forget their names, you kind of think, oh, this is just her before she actually became an exorcist uh, with her husband. 
yeah, towards the end of the movie, I thought that maybe the two of them moved to America. Yeah. And then they had a kid and that ended up becoming a character. Like, exactly. Something and like I that. I don't think that's what the movie was trying to uh, do. No, it was just, they were spo- they're two uh, completely unrelated characters, yeah. but it just throws you for loop because they look exactly alike. Yes. So, anyway. Yeah, and the, ho- the whole, the whole uh, anchoring to the Conjuring uh, cinematic universe, while watching this movie, it really did feel like an afterthought. Because it, it, was. it was just that scene at the end <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that tied it together. There was nothing happening throughout the movie yeah. that had anything to do with any of the other movies. Now, apparently, there were supposed to be some Easter eggs in this movie. With um, the director said that there's like a, a picture from Annabelle in it, um, but I, 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 I wouldn't know. It. Yeah, I wouldn't know. It was probably just a really brief little thing, and there was supposedly a couple of others, but. Uh, I, wouldn't know. I know she, uh, there's a part where when they're in like that bedroom area they're spending the night they they're, they are looking at some pictures on the yeah. wall maybe um, one of those I don't know I don't know but yeah I don't supposedly there I, don't know. I are thought the to be whole some. ending was disjointed like mm-hmm, I, I agree I feel like we had a, a shitty victory that made no sense anyway yeah. you know and then to take that even mediocre crappy victory they had and to shit on it with this stupid like hey we're gonna con- Lego this shit to the next movie just yeah. just to please you guys Ah, whatever. <laughs> you know, like, so you got you had something to say about Frenchie. You guys wanted to talk about that character. Real what quick. a stupid name to give a character <laughs> in a horror movie. There was no, and they only gave him. He says, "Oh, call me Frenchie." He was trying to like oh, ex- insinuate that he was good at French kissing or something. So bad. I mean, I don't know. It's they, they no. did shoehorn in, but uh, he's supposed to be like the, the Vera Farmiga character and the Patrick Wilson character from the first two Conjuring movies are based on real people, and Frenchie is based on a real person too. That's exact same name. They all have the exact same name. So, so. do all French Canadians? Are they all called Frenchy? Kind of like Mohammed. Like no. so, if you go to like Quebec, everybody's Frenchy. Yeah. Hey, what's up, Frenchy? To us. <laughs> to, to, to us. To us Americans. Yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. That's gonna that's gonna wrap it up for us. Unless you guys have what some were your more rate? deep what, thoughts. Yeah, what, what's, what's your, your rating? rating? Uh, I'll, I'll give it a I'll give it a two out of five, and that's just for the music and the cinematography. Yeah, I gave it a I gave it a three just because I thought it was creepy as hell. I think it fell apart in the second half of the movie. Mm-hmm. Just kind of got disjointed, and the dialogues kind of went got ridiculous. And just like yeah. William said, went to camp. So I give it a three out of five. Yeah, I gave it a three out of five too, just because I think the horror normies are just going to be okay with it. Right. Yeah. You'll like have a me. good time. Yeah. I think that the the horror guys will have a good time. Period. I mean, there'll be a lot of nuns running around this Halloween. I guarantee it. Oh yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. All right, guys. So that'll do it. All right. You oh. know the drill. Well, don't wave yet. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Wave later. Come back. It's not over. <laughs> uh, if you like this episode, please hit the like button. Um, a lot of people watch our stuff, but no one, no one interacts with our stuff. Hit the like button and comment below with uh, what you think about nuns as horror figures or what yeah. you think about horror movies in general, just to let us know what your thoughts are. And maybe we'll talk about it in one of our future episodes. Um, other than that, uh, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell, and hopefully we'll see you next time. Peace. Hello.